bigger that came back to my crazy little face. Then my big hit is on the on the big screen, you know, on style. So really like Ray, it's just, you know. If you're not there and you've encountered him this weekend, he's very charming, very charismatic. And you know, and I can imagine Daniel as a young kid as well. I consider Daniel as my little brother, but you know, he's, he's, he used to, you know, <laughs> you know he, he, this this young guy, man, he's really talented and very physically strong, internally strong as well. And he's like a little, he's like he's like a gummy bear, you know, I'm not sure he is. because he's, he's really springy. And he's like one of those students you want to just mould. You know, he's so naturally talented in anything he does. He'd be awesome, and he is awesome. It'd be great, and it's really—it's a pleasure when he comes over to my house. We work out, and he jumps around in there. So you know, he's he's a, he's a good guy, man. He's going to do really well. Thank you, Leo. There we are. <laughs> Jamie, you talked about using your imagination earlier for both of you. What what was was it a big challenge working with all those blue screens and the green screens, and, and having to envision all, all, all those sets? What was that like? For me, I, I, I worked on a movie before Star Wars, and I think that really helped me to cement me being part of Star Wars. Was I did the same with Daniel, but I had a little bit more. I had a bit to back it up. Whereas I said, when I um, had seen the pictures of Darth Maul, I, I, I never imagined me to do it because I was like, oh, they would never ask me to do this. But I was called in to work with the stunt team and the coordinator on the fight, and I was like, why are they asking me to come in, but they're talking like they need someone to play the part, and it could be me, and if I play my cards right, and I show, you know, it could be me. So it was like a little tease. So I had this, like, wealth of, peripheral of all different ideas of, you could do this, you could do that, you could do this, and this. Because I felt that at the time, showing the pictures of, uh, seeing the pictures of Darth Maul, it could be a good way of showing off what I could do. And, uh, so when I got the part, it was it was it, it was like I had to put my money where my mouth is. You know, I had to really come up with these different ideas. And then for me, working on blue screen and green screen, screen, I, I quite liked it because to imagine, you know, like one of the scenes I did was to to send out the probe droids out to the desert. And I remember George saying, "Just imagine you're sending two droids out, and you're going to get a good guys." And that was easy. You know, I just had to know where he, you know, he just told me that I want you to look in this direction. And, you know, if you tell yourself in your head, there's, there's two little robots flying in the air, then the audience will believe it. So it's, it's believing it in yourself to do it. But it can also be a bit sickening working on blue screen and green screen, because it can, especially if you're in the air and you're doing flips and somersaults, and all you see is green, it can just feel a bit sick. <laughs> I remember working on the movie before Star Wars, Mortal Kombat, and I did a lot of green screen on it, and I didn't like it because it made me feel sick. I was like 50 foot in the air, and I had to do somersaults coming down. And uh, so it was actually quite nice to work on blue screen for Star Wars. You know, blue was a better color for me than green. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't feel as, feel as sick. So. How about you, Daniel? Me? Um, I think we can all relate to Star Wars in some kind of individual way. I mean, from men to women, we all did something as a little kid, which was kind of using your imagination. We all played with toys. We all imagined Barbie and Ken forever being happy, playing with your cars in the dirt. I mean, we were all with, we all Barbie got and Ken. Barbie and Ken. I mean, I mean, G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe. <laughs> That's going to end up on Twitter. I know it. No, but, you know, uh, you know, and we all went there. I mean, even though no one else was with us, we took ourselves on a journey. And that's all blue screen and green screen is. It's imagining something that isn't there and being able to take someone on a journey wherever you're going in your mind. Yeah. And my mind goes a lot of crazy places. So I'll take you somewhere you would never be in your whole life. But um, being able to see the, the things, George, George would, would, would say it to me as a little kid for me to understand. I mean, like... You ready to come back on Monday and fly spaceships and fly through asteroid fields? Oh. <laughs> that sounds sweet, you know? And you look outside and there's a little pot on the little thing. So, you know, you may not imagine that. It's For me, I was very creative. My mom said I had verbal diarrhea. I could sit scared and talk to a wall and I'd like to have a conversation. I had a lot of imaginary friends growing up. Too many. But, um, it's just fun being out to like, you know, see things that ain't there, you know, and be able to visualize. There's medication for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which I heard. Well, well, there's 
my te- one of my teachers, he told me, Daniel, you aren't an actor until you see this pen, as cl- and he had up a big pen, as clearly as you see this pen. I said, well, where's the pen? <laughs> you my boy, you have far more work to go. I'm like, I can see Star Wars droids, you know, blowing up and everything. I can't see your pen, I'm sorry. No, but I don't know, that's it, you know? Use your imagination, it's like Mickey Mouse, you know? You gotta be creative. It's funny, because, um, I have this habit of, uh, as experienced as I, I think I am, when I'm on a movie set and I'm working with guns or fake guns, I have a habit of going, pew, 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 pew. And then the director turned around and go, Ray, what's the pew, pew, pew? I still do it to this day, because when you're a kid playing cowboys, you know, when you play cops, you go, pew, 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 pew. That was the sound of guns back in the day on, in, on TV. And, and even when I do fight scenes, I have this big array. You're the whole package. You bring sound effects as well. <laughs> because I'm going, <laughs> <laughs> When you're watching the back on the screen, you see my lips going, Pa, pa, cha, pa, cha, woo. You know, I even make my own sword noises. I was working on this movie just recently and I'm going. And it's just something from being a kid and imagining. It just reminded me. I just can't get out of it. It's just, I have to, I don't have to be in it. I have to be in that world, you know. And uh, when, you know, when I stop enjoying it and stop be, being Peter Pan, then I'm gonna, I'll, I'll stop acting, you know, and stop, you know, do something else because it's fun, you know, you get, you know, it, when you're on set and you get to do what you really want to do and you play around and you get to play characters that are fun, it's really enjoyable, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great, you know, it's, it's a great experience, it's a great, I say a job because you get, you know, it puts food on the table, but I really love it, you know, I love getting out of bed and, and you know, somersaulting out of bed and turn up to, turn up to set, set you ready to go and then you wait around all day. And then at four o'clock in the morning you're expected to do a, you know, an awesome fight scene but you've been there for 15 hours. I like that though. You know, I think it's a bit boring waiting all day. And that's when you make new friends and you start teaching everyone how to use lightsabers and you find out how many Star Wars fans are on a, a movie set. You know, which is fun. You know? For those of you just coming in and you didn't hear, we've got a, a microphone here. If anyone has a question for uh, Ray Parker, Daniel Logan, feel free to come down uh, to the middle here and uh, you can uh, ask them uh, any question you've been wondering. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and go to the audience and, and start with the first question. Hi, my name is Roxy. I'm here actually for mostly my sister, who sadly can't be here because she's in Italy. Um, I just want you to realize how much of an impact you, Ray Park has made on our lives. Uh, ever since Phantom Menace came out, she has been a fan of yours. And it was sort of like the final push for her to do karate. Like, she oh, loved cool. Power Rangers and stuff. So she's been doing it ever since. Oh, cool. Um, so she has her first degree black belt now in Taekwondo. Good for her. And um, she's just so sad she couldn't be here. Oh, it's like, really well done. And, you know, thanks. I, I, for me, Get Star Wars was like a, it wasn't just getting a part in a movie and able, and able to show a little bit of martial arts. It was also that all the times I used to compete for Great Britain and you know, funding yourself and finding money, borrowing money from your uncles to travel the world, to compete, it sort of made it worth it, you know, to talk about martial arts and to, to talk about it in a positive way. And for the last 10 years I've heard a lot of great stories where people have taken up martial arts because they watched Phantom Menace. And that's awesome, to me that's, that's wicked because watching Bruce Lee, I felt like I was Superman. You know, and you know, so to jump, you know, to be inspired by watching movies and watching other great people, and it's really good to be on, to be on that, that the shoot to be on the other foot. Yeah, and you're, I, su- you're her Superman. Oh, thank you. I want to be Batman one day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want to say thank you because we would probably wouldn't be the same people without you. Oh, I appreciate it, and I wouldn't be the same person without you. So thanks. Oh. Thank you. We love you. Love you too. But I have a question for Ray. Um, I was wondering when you feel felt like I spoke to you yesterday. Didn't I? You did. Yes. We, we talked to martial arts. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was wondering when you felt like your dreams of being a martial artist in film had actually come true. Whether it was the Star Wars or something before that. 
It was, it was Star Wars because um, no, no, I did a movie be before that called Mortal Kombat Annihilation, and I, and I had, it was, it was, I'm, I'm thankful for the experience that I had. And I'm thankful that I, I walked back on the job because I, I, I fired myself. I walked off because it wasn't what I expected of movies. I, 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 it was the, the dream come true to get an audition, to win the audition. Of, you know, there was a couple of hundred stunt men auditioning, and to be singled out by you, come over here, everyone else go home, and then to be the martial arts sort of advisor and, and teach people at 20 years old. And I was like, well, wait a minute, just last month I was in Malaysia wishing I was working with Jackie Chan, and now I'm here in London, I'm working on this big movie set, and wow, I'm not stacking shelves at a supermarket anymore, and I'm, wow, I'm doing nothing, but it's, this is not movies, it was like really weird. So I was on it for about a few months and I sat around doing packing boxes, cleaning mats, making tea. And I'm like, this is not what movies is all about. So I had a big argument with some of the stunt guys and walked off and said, I'm going back to teaching because I had more fun teaching than sitting around all day. I don't care how much money you pay me. And then the lead actor called me and says, well, I really want you to come back on and I want you to be part of my team, not the English stunt team, part of the Hong Kong team. I went, all right then, cool. So he sort of kept me on his wing a little bit, and it was only once we left England, I went to Georgia and Thailand. Then I really learned how to do air rounds, wire work, and really sort of molded myself a little bit. And it was when I was in Star Wars that I was like, yeah, all my Wushu buddies are gonna be like, yeah. <laughs> all those people said, you're just a pansy in pink pajamas, jumping around slapping your hands. I was like, yeah, I'll show you. <laughs> You guys we used to we could wear silks, you know, and I always loved wearing like pinks and purples, you know, some colours that stood out, you know, and, or black and red. And it's funny, I get to play two characters, black and red, you know, but they were my favourite. I would wear a black suit and black shoes with red stripes on them and red sweatbands, and uh, and that was my moment of the year. And then it became really hard after that. It was it was one of those challenging, getting put in at the top there, and then. Trying to, you know, trying to swing with like with weights on, and I'm so I'm still waiting for the big, you know, moment where I can show him like things I, I really want to show in a movie, you know, like action wise. And Snake Eyes was great. I got to use a katana. I got to learn how to use tomfus. I've never used tomfus before, so I'm, I'm really I've been very lucky, you know, to do what I'm doing, and, I, and I'm glad I, you know, I was able to play Snake Eyes. Um, but yeah, it was, on, it was on Star Wars, you know. I remember that moment before the end fight scene. And we were, you know, it was shooting the scene and, you know, I played the a fire starter by the Prodigy and I felt like the fire starter was getting myself psyched up. And everyone was looking at me and it was like competition time, the big fight, what everyone was waiting for on the film. And it was a, it was a good moment, you know. I remember Liam and Ewan what we were saying. And you know what's funny? When the doors opened and we were playing, they both went. <laughs> and the funny thing is, I went. <laughs> so you know, even you know, Star Wars actors were doing it, and I'm sure every other Star Wars actor who had a lightsaber or who held a lightsaber, I'm sure George Lucas is did there and go. <laughs> I'm sure his hums a different hum, you know. He has a special. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny, even on, you know, on Star Wars, I was making my own sound effects, you know? So, uh, it was fun. Thank you. Thanks for your question. Sorry, I just had an energy drink earlier, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I've got a question for both of you, uh, starting with Ray. You're primarily known as a physical presence, so what is it like working in a role where you actually get to do voice acting? It's great. I mean, you know what, it's, when I was younger, to get... You know, when you're like, I've never been an extra, I've never been a background artist or anything like that. I've, I've always, you know, my first job was, wasn't considered stunts because I wasn't a stuntman. So it used to pee me off a little bit because I wasn't accepted as a stuntman in England. Um, so, but then when we went to Thailand, the Pat Johnson, who did the Karate Kid and stuff, he was a coordinator. He came up to me because we're brave, we're not in England anymore. So I know you're not a stuntman and I have a man waiting, he can take your place. But I'm going to give you the chance to. You're going to do some scary stuff, and and uh, but I know you can do it. And I said, Mr. Johnson, just give me the opportunity to do it. And if I can't do it, send me home. But I knew in my heart I can do this. You know, to do an air ram or wire work. You know, like I was a guy doing triple front somersaults and standing double front somersaults. You know, I, in my mind I could do anything. 
And uh, so it was, when you knew you were going to get a line in a movie, it was like, I got a line in a movie, can you give me two lines in a movie? Can you give me three lines in a movie? But as the more roles that I do, with lots of dialogue, I'm actually cutting my lines out. Because sometimes too much dialogue, you, you, you come across weaker. You know, sometimes some, certain characters have to explain in the movie. You know, you know, there's one character that always tells you what's going on. And we were doing this in my last, uh, I was working with Bill Atherton, William Atherton, he was in like, he, he was Die Hards and stuff, and he's like an experienced actor, and I'm sitting there like, Bill, man, he's, there's a lot to say in these lines here. I said, I love it, it's great. But, and he gave me a good little bit of advice to just get your point across without insulting the director and the writer, but, you know, you don't have to go on this spiel of having a whole monologue. So it's nice, like, Heroes was good for me. Because I wanted to do some action because it was a TV platform and I, w I wanted to show what I could do. You know, I don't do knife work, I work with swords and other weapons. So it was nice to work with the knives um, and do something different and, uh, and make up some stuff and have some good dialogue, you know. And uh, it, I have no, it had no problem doing dialogue, you know. I like, to, I like doing characters that are not myself, you know. I like to go off the wall and, and make up voices and, and, and do different sounds and voices, you know, and, and that's what I like doing. And recently I've been doing a lot of voiceover work for like cartoons and other things. Like I did the, the Spartacus, um, we did the motion comic, and I did that before the TV show came out. And it's nice to go in the booth and actually just do a voice. And having two kids, and, and you know, when my kid turned around to me, my daughter says, Daddy, I prefer mommy to tell me stories. <laughs> I was like, I, I want to go training, I want to get a story done. And then so I started being very colourful with my voices and, you know, and go, Anthony! You know, and just, just make it colourful for kids, you know, and watching kids' programs, like, and, and you see how, you see these grown-ups going, Hey kids, we're going to today, we're going to do this. <laughs> yeah. Here <Here> we go. <laughs> so it would really open my eyes to kids, you know, and like, I used to teach kids, but it's been fun. And my kids have made me a better actor in the last five years. I've, I've gained more opportunities because of my kids. And uh, I really, because you, you're not so stiff and starchy. You know, you can be, you know, you can be a superhero, but you can be a big squeaky teddy bear at the same time. <laughs> well, the next part that actually leads right into it, Daniel, how do you feel being just a voice when you're doing voice acting? Um, I love it. I put just as much work into voice acting as I do in blue screen and green screen. I mean, it's almost the same thing as you have no one to bounce back and forth off most of the time. If you're lucky, you will get one, one uh, session with everybody in the booth, and then that's how you kind of get your rhythm. But um, I love it, man. I, I mean, I can roll out of bed, put my pajamas, roll on down, I have to brush my teeth, go do makeup for three hours, you know, so... I enjoy it. I mean, being part of Star Wars again was a great honor, especially they didn't ask me to uh, audition. Oh, they didn't even test my voice. So I just made sure I stopped, uh, stopped drinking at night time so that I didn't go to work with a croaky voice. So you know what people don't realize is that it's not, it's not just because you're just speaking, it's not, because it's not easy. You still have, it's, still, it's still an art. Yeah, you still have to yeah. put acting into it also, yeah. you know. It's, you got to put the... Uh, I, uh, what is it? Oomph. You know, you gotta give it that. You gotta, if you don't, if you just sit there and you're, you know, hey, Boba, what's up, Jedi? You know, it's starch, but you have to kind of be, hey, Jedi, what are you doing over there? And there's these guys looking through a window at you like you're a fish, you know, a deranged fish or animal or something. <laughs> <laughs> ah, great. Can we do it without less movements? No, but I, I'm really having fun on the Clone Wars. Yeah, but you know what? I've got to say, like, when I've done some voice stuff and I've done some voice work for my last film, you know, and there's a third, and it's called the gym, you know, like when you do it. But if you're not, if you're saying, you can't just go, okay, today I'm going to tell you a story, and you know, it's going to, you really have to, you know, when you see the, like, behind the scenes and guys are doing voices for straight and they're, like, acting all like they're doing it, you really have to be physical with the voice. Because you, you know, if you're, especially if it's animated, you've got to, your body has to believe it, you know, it's, it's, some people are really good at just doing, like, being good with their voice, isn't it, like, yeah, to tell like, a story. D, D Baker is crazy, I mean, we'll be sitting in there and he'll be like, chit 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 and his cricket noise. I'm like, cricket? <laughs> you just like, cricket, cricket, you sound like a cricket. I mean, I have, I have crickets in my room because I have lots of, like, beta, I have a beta dragon and other lizards and stuff. Going to sleep at night time with those things drive me mad, man. But yeah, he just sits there and then I'm like, well, can you do a pig noise? So he's just like, oh, it's like, ah! like, man, that's crazy. He's like, yeah, I'm the most 
because Ray does a lot of voices on the uh, on the games. So I, I always play with Call of Duties and stuff like that, and I was kicking out with Ray when he told me, oh, yeah, I'm doing the voice, but he does all the monsters in Gears of War. So it's cool being out here, like, my friend being, you know, all the, all the voices, and then having that guy in the booth who just does these crazy noises, you know, I was like, I don't even know how he makes those noises, you know? Like, where do you learn that stuff? <laughs> Talk to his imaginary friend, it's just like you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you both, it was great to meet you both yesterday. Oh, thank you, you too, buddy. Hi, how are you guys doing today? Good, how are you doing? Good. I have one question for uh, Ray Park. A lot of the roles that you've played have been you either heavily made up or straight up wearing a mask. Now, has there any been any ego issues associated with that? Like, have you ever wanted more credit for the roles that you've played? No, no. I, remember, I'm like a, we're all struggling actors, and uh, in the beginning, to sort of say, yeah, I can act without the makeup, and I can still speak without the makeup, but. What I realized and it was hard in the beginning is that Darth Maul has such an impact on everyone. You know, it got me in a lot of rooms, but it's like you, you, you're associated with that character until you break out slowly. And like, and it, some will go, it's like when I saw the guy at Nightmare on Elm Street, and uh, what's his name? Um, Rob England. When I met him, I was never scared of Nightmare on Elm Street again because I saw an interview with him and they kept a secret who played uh, Freddy. But when I saw it was him, it, it, it sort of spoiled it for me. That fantasy was gone, so I, I sort of remembered that when I was a kid. But there's, there's, there's also this frustration, maybe it's a little bit of ego, but now I, I don't really, I don't mind doing the makeup roles and the mask. It's not, I went after Snake Eyes. It didn't come to me, I went and chased it. Because when I got a call from a friend who said, look Ray, they're making a Snake Eyes Storm Shadow movie, get your people onto it. I said, what people? So I called everyone I knew and said, look, if you just know who's making a movie, can you find out? Just get me in the room and just let me dance and I'll be able to do what I can do. And I turned up to the audition with a bunch of other guys and I had a torn meniscus, I couldn't walk, I hadn't been training for four months, you know, I couldn't run after my kids and I wanted that job. I, 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 I cleansed for four days, I was at a show and I cleansed and dropped about five pounds and I, I got off the plane and straight to the audition. Because I really wanted to do it. And a lot of my friends said to me in the business, he goes, Ray, why do you want to do a role where you, you know, you're trying to get out of the makeup roles? Why do you want to play someone where you're not going to see your face or speak? So you don't understand, this is a part that I want to do. You know, it's not about, you get to a point where you go, you know, it's, Hollywood and films will always be there, you know? As an actor, you can always grow with it. But I have other dreams that I want to do that has nothing to do with films. You know, there's other ambitions that I want, you know, I want to achieve and things I want to do, but I'm going to use my credits for movies to help me along the way, you know, and, you know, I don't mind playing superheroes for the rest of my life, you know, I want to, I want to play Toad again, you know, I want to, play, I want to go back and play Darth Maul. So, now that I've played Snake Eyes, I'm really happy and content, I've, I've, I've had experience with e uh, um, heroes, it's good, you know, it's like, now I'm like, you know what, I don't really need to kick and punch. And when I'm going to do a somersault, it's going to be something special for the film. You know, and uh, that on my last film, I wasn't going to do any action. The director didn't want me to. And then we had a great opportunity where I could show a different type of action. So it's, it's been good now. I'm sort of con more content. But it was frustrating. I mean, I know everyone goes, why did you choose the roles you're doing? I didn't. It, ha I had, it came my way. It was, the, oh, I need to do a film. I need to do that. And there's even some movies out there that you go, why did Ray do that? But there was a time where I wasn't working for a couple of years, and you're like, I, I need to, you know, I need to gain more experience. I need to work. I need to show that I can do this. I can act. I can do things. And uh, so it's, it's, it's paying off. It's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a hard, hard thing to do, but if you really believe in yourself and you really you're still that big kid and you've got the imagination, you can do anything. You know, so it's good. I don't know what's in, what's in store for me now. I really hope to come back and play Snake Eyes because now that I'm 100% fit again, that I really like want to just just kick it. You know, just really do something. You know, really good. You know, something special. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, I really enjoyed your performance as Darth Maul Ray, but I also thought you really rocked in X-Men as Toad. Oh, thank you. And since Toad in X-Men the movie was very different from the Toad in the comics, I mean, it was cool for one thing. 
Uh, how much input did you have into this version of Toad? I mean, the Toad and the movement? Quite a bit. I mean, I didn't want to play Toad. <laughs> like, no, I'll be serious. It wasn't like, I, you know, at the time, Star Wars was massive, Phantom Menace just came out, so I'm a bit like, my shoulders were wider, my head was massive. <laughs> and I'm going, yeah, well, this is it, I've arrived, you know, and I've got agents, like, poking things at my bum, saying, you're great, Ray, the sun shines out your bum. <laughs> you're special, you're going to get your $50 million contract now, woo, you know? And I believed it, but at the same time, like, I don't believe what they're saying. And then I met Brian, and they, they wanted me to play Pyro. And uh, so I was like, Pyro, I wanted to do X-Men. But I kept on saying to him, I want to do Wolverine. I want to do Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and in, my, in my head, I was Wolverine. I could do it. But then I was like, what about Gambit? You want to bring Gambit on? Because I still want to be Gambit. Because I wanted to do it. Him on JD, get a bitch. You know? you know, I wanted to do it. And, uh, and he was a cool character to me. When I was a kid, and when we were on Star Wars, me and uh, one of the other stunt guys were talking about what we could do as Wolverine. And, uh, and then it was just funny how I get asked to come in. So I made a special trip out to LA because I'd never been to LA before. And the, the producer called me and said, Hey, Ray, are you going to be in LA anytime soon? And I went, Yeah, booked a ticket straight away and met with the guys for X Men. So when Brian came back to me and goes, Look, Ray, we were. We wanted to play Toad. I went, Toad? Because <laughs> I, like, I knew what Toad was. I said, I, I don't want to be a hunchback. <laughs> the booze, Toad, you know? He goes, no, Ray, Ray, this is, this is an opportunity for you to do something different. Something, something, bring some, you bring something to the table on this one. So he got to the point where he said, look, Ray, we're doing with different makeup tests, and I had, I had green skin and scaly skin coming down. And, and back then I was a bit more lean and you know, fit looking. And uh, so I was like, yeah, I'm going to show off my abs, I'm going to show off my arms, you know, yeah, give me this sleeveless top and stuff. And then he came up to me because, well, you're just too handsome to play Toad. Like, we we, we want to try you out with some prosthetics. And I said, no, because he promised me. I said, look, Brian, I'll do it, but no prosthetics, please. So he goes, what about some warts on your face and stuff? So my ego did play a little part in that, and that's where I wanted to break out from the makeup stuff, you know, like I wanted to prove I can do it. But now, look, now, 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 knowing what I know, it's all about the character, it's all about the role, you know? It's, it's, if you're working, you're doing what you really enjoy, and it means, you know, you're putting on prosthetics, and you're playing, like, you know, Ron Perlman, playing Hellboy, and, you know, all these different characters. I really take my hat off to those guys, you know? Because it, it, you really got to make it come to life. And, and you've got to, it, it's got to be deep as well. So, you know, I would, if something really interests me, I'll, 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 I would really want to do it. And the one thing I really want to do is play Dan Rand. I want to be Iron Fist. You know, I really, that's one thing I want to do. You know, I'll bleach my hair blonde and, you know, do the American accent and have an eight pack. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um. This is for Daniel. Um, how old were you when you started acting? I was, a, I was 11 years old. Um, I started uh, in New Zealand where I was doing the commercials that they could do. I did this one where it kind of helped me out for uh, leading for like uh, this TV show called Shoulder Street, where I played a smart little kid in a TV show. I was like, I think 10 and a half, 11. And, uh, yeah, all, every newspaper in my country ended up like bagging me, like, what an ignorant little kid, what is he doing like this? So, I was at 11 years old where I first got my, uh, my big thing and knowing you gotta watch out who you can and can't please. But, yeah, 11, so I've been doing it for, um, oh, I'll be 23 next week. Uh, <laughs> 12 years? <laughs> Six days <next> school. <laughs> Colin. Colin, how'd you feel about uh, going on stage with Daniel and Ray? Good. <laughs> you guys good with that? Sure. Do you have a Yes. Yes? You want to get it? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you have a lightsaber too, though. <laughs>
Because I was very aware of I looked or did something like that. People go, ah, oh, he's just looking like Darth Maul. So, um, but your face can only do so many expressions without changing the prosthetics. And uh, so it was, it, I'm glad I did that, you know, because uh, to be honest with you, in my head I was thinking, this is my Jackie Chan moment. <laughs> you know? So even though you guys saw Darth Maul, it was my Jackie Chan moment. Because I was like, how do I make this look so cool? Because I thought he wanted a whole routine. He goes, no, we just want. Remember, the music's gonna go did it did it did it did it did it did it And I was like, oh, okay. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna kick it up like Jackie Chan, catch it, and then do my turn. You know, and that, that's what I, that was what was going through my head. So I didn't mind doing that. And Carl Newman, the director of uh, Fanboys, is a friend of mine. I've known Carl way before he, you know, he's like, he loves soccer, and we have a lot of common com we play soccer, and the producers as well of that movie, we go and play soccer together. So he said, look, Ray, I'm gonna do this movie. Do you mind doing a cameo role? And at first I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah all right, Star Wars. And uh, I said, yeah, why not, man? I don't mind. And he, and he was telling me who else he's going to have on as a, as a cameo role. And I said, yeah, I don't mind doing it. So when I got there, he says, well, we want you to do, you're going to play one of the T8, you know, one of the guards, and do this. And, and you know, at first it was like time to get mauled. So in my head, I'm like having fun with it, you know? And it's been, it, was really, it was a lot of fun to do it because I got to hang out with the guys, got to meet Kevin Smith. Yeah, I was like, oh, Kevin Smith. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, Kevin Spacey. So, I have met Kevin Smith quite a few times. And, uh, but yeah, it was fun to do, you know? It was, it was any, anything you do, you get to be part of something. Well, I, I got asked recently to do a cameo of something else, and it was going to have Tom Welling in it, and it was going to be had a bunch of super, guys who play superheroes, but I couldn't do it because of uh, another commitment. And I was really bummed out because I really wanted to do it because Daniel and I were going to do it. And I was trying to, I told the producer, like, oh, wouldn't it be great if you just turned up to the door? We could either be really lazy eating pizza <laughs> or you can knock it on the door and we're doing backflips and somersaults and the whole house is Jedi and we're like fighting things, things pop down the house, you know. We live the superhero life, you know? And it was a shame because we never got to do it. Thank you. Next time. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Becky. Thank hey, you Becky. all very much for coming to Phoenix. Uh, I hope you're coming next year. I hope so. Um, so I'm a fan of all of your awards, movies, and everything, but are you guys big fans of um, professional MMA? I know you're wearing a shirt, and I was talking to Mr. Logan about last night's fights. So you guys like UFC, Dream? Yeah, you know what's funny? I never liked, the UFC. I never liked the UFC before. Um, I didn't get why two guys were on the floor hugging each other at first. <laughs> Honestly, seriously. And then when I had my knee injury, I was sitting there editing and I had, I had a small TV playing. I started watching the UFC, the TV show, and you know, the guys get, you know, the training and so. stuff. The Ultimate Fighter. The Ultimate Fighter, yes. And then I was impressed because that type of training is what I do, you know, like mixing it up. And, and so I got more educated on what was going on. and. 
You know, it's funny because I woke up this morning and I put this in my suitcase and I was thinking of Daniel because Daniel and I went to Affliction, met the owner and he gave us a bunch of cool stuff and, you know, and I, I really like with the guys and you know, some of the athletes, you know, the training they go through and there's some good role models in the UFC and, uh, and you both turned up wearing the same t-shirt this morning. <laughs> so it was, it was funny, you know, but it's, um, it's, uh, I like watching it, but like, I, I didn't watch the fight last night because I didn't want to pay 50 bucks towards a hotel to watch it. Yeah, you know, but I, I want, it, it's nice to watch with a group of guys. And, and you know what I like watching? I like watching the training they do. You know, like even I, I don't like watching fighting as much. I like to watch what they did to get where they're getting at. You know, I like to watch the back stories. You know, so the guys, the guys are fit. They're fit guys. Well, have you ever thought about doing it right? Only if I got paid a lot of money. <laughs> this is my idea of doing uh, the UFC fight. I go out there, get the biggest guy ever, you give me 10 million trillion dollars, knock on that show boat, just go and do flips and somersaults, box splits, do the band down. As soon as he comes out and he breathes on me, I'm going to faint. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go home and take my money. <laughs> um, as being a fan, we all have who we want to be, who we want to act as, or who we just want to be. Do you guys have that? Batman. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Dan? Um, I have many people. I mean, I'm inspired by Johnny Depp. Um, I just think he's magnificent, you know, and what he does. Um, I just love, I love acting. I love the whole concept of it. And I just love being able to take people on journeys. Um, and I, to tell you the truth, any character. I mean, talking about Kevin Spacey, I think he's, he's an extraordinary actor also, so he just doesn't get, you know, the glorify that he should deserve. But, um... Maybe he doesn't want that, though. I'll take it for him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a lot of actors out there that, you know, keep below the line, but they do really well. Well, look at Tim, you know, Django fan. You know, we, we hang out with him because we're friends, but he lives in New Zealand, he likes his little island, you know? It's strange, as soon as they said there's an airplane waiting for you to go to America, I said, no, no return ticket. <laughs> Leave me in America. I don't need to go back to New Zealand. But, uh, no, I love New Zealand. But, um, no, yeah, I, I, I just, I love to play, like, characters where people are like, that's not Daniel Logan. And Boba Fett gave me the opportunity, you know. I wasn't known at the time, so people only look at me Boba Fett now. But, I mean, as Ray said, just slowly progress and hopefully sometime, if not, you know, continue with Boba, you know, hopefully... Be the next Van Damme or something. See, I want Daniel to play Boba Fett in a TV show, okay? <laughs> what is it I can say Kim do is not this young, this young man. What he can do is unbelievable. I mean, like, I know, like, if he had the opportunity to play anything, anything, but it'd be nice to see him as Boba Fett. Like now, if he's just kick ass. <laughs> Thank you. Forgive me for swearing. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sage Greenwald. Uh, I had a question for the both of you. Uh, throughout uh, Star Wars, did you, the development of you, you guys developed your characters, did you know straight away from the audition how you were going to play the character, or did it develop as you started to learn more about the Star Wars history? No, for me, I knew straight away that uh, earlier I touched on it when I was speaking to Nick Gillard and I said, this is why I can do this, I can do this, I can do that, I can do this. It was like something was in me, like Snake Eyes as well. I knew exactly what I was going to do to play Snake Eyes and, um, and some other roles too. Told, I was a bit confused because it was like, okay, I still had the old Told in my head from the comics. What can I do differently? But um, with Darth Maul, he... What you saw on screen, I did a little bit different on my audition tape and, and, and what I was playing. I saw him more as a silent uh, warrior, you know, like he didn't show emotion too much. He wasn't about the growling and the grimacing, it was more about dark. And I saw him as like a gentleman in a sense, like he was old school. He didn't, you know, he, he didn't even have to look at you to strike. He's more, more pow, 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 you know? But for film, you've got to change it up a little bit. Um, but that's intention was still there, you know, just the whole, you know, looking and, you know, and George actually asked me to you know, show the teeth off a little bit, you know, but, you know, do that. I didn't want to do that, you know, but you've got to animate yourself a little bit, you know, and uh, but there wasn't too much of that for Darth Maul. If you, if you watch the film, it's just very, just to the point. Even when there are two puppets are talking, he's just there like, okay, let's get to business. You know, he doesn't have to do much. So I pretty much knew. 
it's, it's, it's nice to have that sometimes because you're in it, you know, you're really, you're a big kid and you want to play this part. You know, sometimes when you see a picture, you just know what you can do with that, with that imagination. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh, and uh, me, um, I never knew. I didn't. I, I grew up in New Zealand with my mom. So we weren't in New Zealand. You're either rich or you're you're kind of poor. And, you know, it's very hard to get into the rich if you ain't got comfort very much. My mom had uh, five kids, so we lived in a small house with a lot of people. And whenever you were going to McDonald's or a movie theater, you kind of like ran around your neighborhood telling everyone like you're going to Disneyland kind of thing. But um, I didn't know who I, I didn't know Star Wars. I mean. I wasn't a fan because I uh, I just couldn't afford to be a fan, you know? Star Wars fans are the richest fans I know in the world, man. <laughs> but, um, so walking into it, I didn't know who both it was, so I had to do my research. And George got me my own little TV on set when everyone else was filming, and action, all right, put on mute. So I'd sit there and, oh, where's Boba Fett? No Boba Fett, you know? So then the next movie, boom, bam, pause, oh. Was that him? Maybe? No. So, I didn't have much to go on from research, so then I turned to putting on the costume. And once I put on that outfit, I kind of, well, I couldn't really walk properly without my, because I had my ankles, you know, you're walking like an alien or a robot, a droid. So, once you get the outfit on, you become the character. You're like, alright, here we go. And then, your other characters around you, they help you. They tell you, alright, Daniel. Like, this one, when Tom Wee comes to my house, I look at him. George is... Uh, advice to me was look at him like you're looking at someone suspicious. Well, I have a big brother, and I was like, well, like the police coming to my house? <laughs> what did you say? I was like, no, uh, um, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, no. Background check. No. <laughs> so, uh, so then Ewan comes to me, he's like, Daniel, just do a fart. Uh, do a face like I did a very small fart. Can you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I guess. <laughs> And then, and then, you know, I would try something, and then the other actors would be like, oh, why don't you try this, you know, and everyone being around, they all help you out. And I mean, for my character, I, being a little kid, you know, and not knowing much about ball fed, that was the thing that helped me out. And um, just interacting with everyone with that costume on, just, you can't help you but be ball fed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Unfortunately, we only have time for one more question. This is for both of you. How did it feel to work with George Lucas? There we go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, George, to me, he was kind of like a uh, kind of like an uncle figure. It wasn't like he was my boss. It was like he was my family member. Um, he talked to me like a little kid, you know, that I was. I was 13, and. He really knew how to uh, communicate with me in the way, you know, and as I said, with the, uh, with the asteroid field and, and the spaceships, you know, he kind of tried to help me in any way he could. Um, and I saw with the other guys, you know, I was a little kid who had a lot of energy. I'd run out, hey, George, how you doing? Uh, we're trying to film right now. Hey, George, how you doing? You know, you want anything? Like, no, sit down, I'm fine, you know. <laughs> Don't worry about me. You want a water? No, I said, I'm fine, you know, so he's just a really nice guy. Who, like, he made my experience. And, Still to today, I, um, I moved to America and I began my visas and stuff and uh, my, my uh, lawyer's like, well, it's going to take a couple of months, you know, they got a lot of people trying to get visas for America and stuff like that. So I said, okay, I'm going to go to New Zealand for, you know, a month, hopefully by the time I get back. I, I sent my paperwork. The next day, because George Lucas wrote a hand-signed piece of paper, like, for me to come to this country. Must have had a Star Wars fan, you know, and opened up. <laughs> Click, click, approved, you know? I looked at Corbis and said, I can't believe it. Said, what? Said, you got approved in a day. I said, a day. I'm like, I'm sending George Lucas baskets of flowers. And hey, I'm next door neighbor now. Don't get rid of me. So, you know, and he's still doing things for us to today, you know, like I said, with the, with the letter. So, I, 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 I got to say, you know, he gave me a gift of a lifetime and changed my life. So. I owe uh, not only everything I get for Boba Fett to him, but, you know, now my life I live now, so, yeah, he's a great man. It was great, for me, it was great working with George, you know, it was, I wouldn't be here today if, I, if he didn't believe in me, and he made that decision for me to play Darth Maul, you know, it was his creation, Star Wars is his, and he's got great people working with him, and, uh, you know, I've got, I've got to thank him, so, you know, it's, it's, you know, he's a, a very smart, intelligent man, and uh, 
it, it, working on set was quite intimidating because it was a big production, but it was like a, it was like no other experience. And George was like considered like big brother, you know, that like he, he had his eyes and ears on everything. And uh, there must have been about four or five different. You know, I've never been on a movie like this before. And remember, this is my first acting gig. But he had a, he had he was filming in one set. He'd been once he'd been on our set filming the fight scene, and they were filming other things. But he's watching it, and, and I remember we were goofing off, and George wasn't around. He goes, "Hey guys, I can hear you." <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was like it was just unbelievable. You know, it was one of those things that he 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 knew what was going on, and he and he, he took pride in what was what was being done. So it was really good to. Uh, you know, I'm just glad that he came up with Darth Maul. Thank you.